You're listening to Men of Abundance, episode 153, with Patrick McDaniel. And today we're going to help you stretch your mind. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What's up? What's up? All of you amazing, abundant leaders out there. I am Wally Carmichael, your founder and host of the Men of Abundance podcast, the Pay It Forward community. And I am super excited this evening, kind of antsy, can't sleep, walking around the house like a crazy man because tomorrow evening I'm flying to Tampa to spend some time with family and I just cannot wait. I'm literally like a kid at Christmas which really isn't too much different than any other year because, as you probably know by now, I am like a kid at Christmas, especially during Christmas. But I do have a very busy week ahead of me because basically as soon as I get into Tampa, Florida, we are driving down to Georgia to visit my oldest boy and spend Christmas with him, going back to Tampa for a couple days, and we're going to you know, play around down there, do some things, go look at the new house being built. And then we are driving out to Orlando to do the whole Disney and Universal Studios thing. And just before New Year's, we're going to head back to Tampa, hang out at the house with family for New Year's. And then I'll be heading back here to Hawaii on, uh, on the 3rd of January. But do not worry one little bit. We are still going to have all of our episodes post for the rest of the year. Today we're talking with Pat McDaniel. That's an unbelievable conversation that's coming up here in just a second. Of course, we're going to have our Pay It Forward Aloha Friday for episode 154. Episode 155 is Brandon Hanley of Fatherhood for the Rest of Us. Very, very good conversation for all you fathers out there and anyone who wants to be a father and you ladies who want to introduce your men, your husbands, and the fathers of your children to some amazing, really good content for fathers. Then episode 156 is with Larry Hagner, The Good Dad Project, another great episode for fathers, just back to back. I can't wait to uh, get those out to you in the next week. Of course, episode 157 is another Pay It Forward Aloha Friday. And then episode 158 is Russ Perry of Design Pickle. (laughs) That is one heck of a conversation. And this man has done some amazing things with a business concept that was already out there, but took it to a whole new level. And lastly, we're going to have a conversation with Scott Beebe. I have to say right up front, kind of concerned about that one because the Audio was really weird during our conversation, so I'm hoping I'm able to get that audio straight for you guys. If not, um, we'll go at it again and we'll bring you somebody else. But don't worry about it. It's an abundant world. We'll always figure it out. Because, of course, we are men of abundance. And guys, if you do not want to miss one single episode, make sure you subscribe on whatever podcast player it is that you're listening to. Leave a rating and review if you could. Be abundant in your life today. Pay it forward by leaving a rating and review on iTunes or whatever podcast player it is that you're using. Now, what we're talking about today is getting you out of your comfort zone. This is very difficult for many people, but I'm telling you right now, there is no growth when you're comfortable. None. There's never any growth when you're comfortable. You have to get out of your comfort zone to grow. And our featured guest today shares some great techniques and some action steps for you to do just that. All right, so let me get him on out here for you. Patrick McDaniel is the founder of WiseInsights.net, a site dedicated to helping motivated but weary achievers keep making progress toward their goals and dreams. Pat uses a unique blend of research-backed insights and time-tested wisdom to provide his readers with smart, sure paths toward greater success. Pat's most popular book is the research-backed five-step process to making better decisions. In it, he reveals how to overcome the hidden influences and processes that corrupt our decision-making. Men of Abundance, it is my honor to introduce you to Pat McDaniel. Pat, welcome to Men of Abundance, man. How you doing? Wally, thank you so much for being on the show today. 
Oh, it is my pleasure. Anytime anybody from Interview Valet rec- uh, recommends somebody, generally I don't even have to look at the bio. I just kind of look at the bio to see what you got going on and stuff like that. But I got to thank those guys over there at Interview Valet so much. Top-notch organization. Uh, they've they've placed me on a dozen podcasts that have been outstanding. Excellent, excellent. I know that's working out very well for you. So where are you at in the world today? I am physically in the Atlanta, Georgia area today. Hmm. So you're not far from my oldest boy. My oldest boy is at Fort Stewart. In Augusta, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Just two hours away. Yeah, not too far. He drives down there every once in a while. And I have been to Atlanta myself. I, I really like Atlanta. I was down there for, I used to go at least once a year for about a week um, back when, you know, doing stuff for the Army. And um, I would, the first time I was introduced to Buckhead was during the day. And it was so metropolitan, people jogging through the streets. It was just beautiful. Then I figured, you know, I'm going to go back here in, in the evening. I went back in the evenings. Some guys invited me that I met. And it was a completely different place. It was literally like Girls Gone Wild. I was like, what in the world happened in the last couple hours? Yeah, Buckhead is a is a strange beast. There's a lot of money down there. And there's a lot of clubs and a lot of wealthy people. And it's all interesting mix for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was very, very interesting to say the least. So, Pat, I like to start out the show the way I start out pretty much every single morning, and it just serves me so well, and that is with an attitude of gratitude. What do you have to be grateful for today? Well, I think the number one thing that I'm grateful for every day is uh, the gods of my life, uh, and that my purpose, if you want to call it my destiny, was his idea. So, you know, every day I feel like I've, I've, I'm living for something a lot bigger than myself, which is very, very energizing. So before we got started here, I talked a little bit about what you're doing professionally. But here on Men of Abundance, we really like to focus more on the man behind the abundance. So if you would, share a little bit more about who you are and kind of what led up to what you're doing today. And let's get a little bit personal. Okay. Well, um, you know, I I consider myself an achiever. And uh, I would define an achiever as somebody who wants more out of life. Um, not necessarily... You know, hey, I'm on Shark Tank or anything like that. But, you know, you want more out of life. You don't want to settle. You you know there is more out there. And uh, so you, you just you, you keep pushing forward, you know, taking on new projects and doing different things to get you, uh, you know, really have an impact and make a difference. And so, you know, that's that's kind of the way I've been for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, for me, I, I saw the the underbelly of the achievement world uh, personally where, you know, not everything turns uh, to gold. Not everything works out in a linear fashion where, you know, you do X and then Y happens and you, you all live happily ever, ever after. So, you know, for me, I, I, I had a sort of, I call it a, uh, you know, a labor of love um, creating the, the website wiseinsights.net because it's really designed for achievers who are, worn out you know that's like they, I want more out of life but you know what I've gotten knocked down you know a dozen times or I've run into too many obstacles and stuff and so you know the goal is to try to give them some encouragement some insights and to, and to help them keep moving forward because we all like to do that yeah absolutely and I dig what you got going on with wise insights it's really neat um, but the question that I have in reference to that is uh, as I mentioned in the bio, that you help motivated but weary achievers uh, keep making progress towards their goals and dreams. Kind of define who that is, a motivated but weary achiever. Well, maybe the way I would define it is by describing the opposite. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are, you know, working their job, they come home, they watch TV, they go to bed, the next day they go to work, they don't have any bigger vision for life. And, uh, you know, the weekend comes and maybe they go hang out with some friends or, or do something, but they're, they're not mes- necessarily goal focused. They don't want to be further along in life next year than they are this year and that kind of thing. So, so to me, that's an, that's an achiever person that would fit right in with the website who, who wants more out of life. And, uh, so if you can contrast that with the person who's just, you know, stuck in their ways and happy to sit there in their comfort zone uh, and has no real sense of ambition, then then that's an achiever to me. Is somebody not like that. 
Right, yeah, you can't do a whole lot with somebody who's, you know, just stuck in their rut and happy where they're at. I mean, until something tragic comes along and then they're wondering why didn't they do something, you know, to fall back on, so to speak, like I always talk about. Right, exactly. Yeah, I get that. So how do you do that? I mean, I know you've got some unique uh, research-backed insights that you help people through this and, and, and help them go to that next level. Can you explain a little bit about how that works? Yeah, so... You know, for me, I look at life kind of like a, a road map, and uh, you can either do the trial and error method where you're trying to figure out how to get to Seattle, and you're, you know, you continue to head north, but you're not heading west, and at some point you'll figure it out, I suppose, um, but instead of trial and error, why not sort of triangulate on a map what we know, and so part of that comes from these research-backed insights from behavioral science where we're, we're figuring out a lot of things. And uh, the example I always give, and this is just metaphorical, is, you know, we've noticed that people walk 10 steps and suddenly lean strong to the left. And so the question is, well, I need to know that because I don't want to lean to the left and fall into the, into the hole. So, you know, how can I circumvent that particular you know, pit of quicksand. So some of it's research-backed insights, and they're, to me, absolutely fascinating, where you, you just learn stuff that you're like, oh, well, that does make sense, and that kind of thing. So that's one source of wisdom to understand the roadmap, and the second source is what I call time-tested wisdom, um, and those are proven observations by wise thinkers, uh, things that I also would say are revealed to us by God himself for how to have a, a, a prosperous life, and so we look at both sources and we try to understand, you know, oh, gosh, you know, uh, if I work 24-7 for 19 straight days, I'm going to burn out. Well, that's a very bad idea. Okay, well, time-tested wisdom says, you know, you need to have a kind of a rhythm to life where you, you, you know, you work so many days and then you're off so many days and you, you, you need to, to do that religiously, so to speak. So that's, that's kind of the way I do it because I, I feel like, there's a lot of things that are very avoidable in life, uh, swamps, dead ends, whatever you want to call them. And I'd like to get there to where I want to go the fastest and easiest way without having to keep falling down and getting up and going, I wish I knew that was there. <laughs> right. You know, and it's kind of like what I talk about all the time when I'm raising my boys is I tell them, you know, I tell them this all the time and they still won't listen. And, and I didn't either. I don't know about you, but we have to learn by school of hard knots. If yes. people would just pay closer attention to the folks that came before them, their parents, their aunts, uncles, their bosses, whoever it is, you know, their football coaches, just pay attention to what they say and the guidance that they're giving them and follow that, you're still going to fail. You're going to find your own failures. You're going to find your own shortcomings, but you're going to skip those ones that somebody told you about as opposed to not opening up the map, plotting out the course with somebody who says, this is the best route to take. I know it because when you drive through this town, you got to drive 30, 25 miles an hour, and there's 200 stoplights on the way. Take this route. It'll get you there quicker, unless you want the scenic route. Now, if you want the scenic route, take this route type of thing. You know, And it, it, I appreciate it and move on with the information. Yeah, I, I look at myself as, uh, I call myself an investigating Sherpa, and uh, for your listeners who are maybe not familiar with the term Sherpa, it's uh, sort of a mountain guide who helps people get to where they're, they've been on the mountain a lot. So they kind of know, oh, ice fields over here, giant crevice over here, let's go up this way. And uh, so I'm learning as I go, and then I share that information uh, on my site of, you know, hey, I just learned this. And, and my goodness, there's a ton of good stuff out there to learn, but I haven't got it all figured out, and I'm, I'm learning as I go. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. We're all in the same situation. We're all in the same place. And as far as that Sherpa is concerned, it's extremely important to have somebody like that as your guide because even though you've been up that mountain before, the Sherpa happens to know that the terrain changed a little bit. And you might need to take a different route based on the time of year, or it's been 10 years since the last time he was here. Correct. Excellent. So let's talk a little bit about goals and dreams because we mentioned that in your bio. And the reason why I bring this up is because today, what is today, the 18th of August, the day of this recording, 
I had just done a live Facebook video in reference to a conversation that I had and I have often with people that I know and love is the question on do you share your goals and dreams with other people or do you keep them to yourself? And there's two different thought processes on that. Do you ever get into that when you're talking with some of your clients and, and the folks that you work with? That's a really good question, and I don't think I have a really good answer on that one. Um, I, I think it makes sense to share your, your goals and your dreams because um, once you speak them, they, they tend to come to pass a lot more quickly because you know people can hold you accountable if you want that. Um, and, and a lot of times you just keep moving forward because you it's not one of those things you can bury and and say well nobody knows but um, what what did you hear on the on the Facebook uh, broadcast well there wasn't a whole lot of unfortunately at the time there wasn't a whole lot of interaction back and forth they'll start coming out as we go but the feedback that I usually get and and my argument is what you just said I feel it's important to share that information specifically with if if you're in a mastermind group of some sort I'm not saying go out and tell every single person you see on the street hey I've got this new widget that I'm going to create and it's going to be the next best thing since the iPad and you know it's it's just going to be wonderful and you know all this other kind of stuff you don't want to go out there and just blurt and everything out all the time but at the same time you're going to need people on your time, on your team on your side to help you do that. And one of the um, true stories that I shared because I, I listened to a lot of um, TED talks and I was watching this video of TED talk, and the lady said she, the lady that was speaking was talking about a mother and a daughter. Now the daughter was a young daughter, and she had a speech impediment. She had some speech issues that she couldn't communicate, but she was super smart. And all of a sudden, her grades started dropping drastically. And she started having other issues with students and teachers and other people in the community. And the mom was just torn up about this. She was really trying to rack her brain, trying to figure out on her own what to do because she was so private and trying to keep it private. And finally, one of the ladies that she talks to on a regular basis came to her, and like they always do, and that morning she said, how are you? And the mother just broke down crying. She just couldn't ha keep it in anymore. She couldn't handle it. And she shared the information finally with this woman. And that woman was the catalyst who introduced her to other people that would be able to help her and her daughter. And her daughter's doing so much better today. Had she kept that information in, who knows where it would have, the grief would have killed her. You know, and the daughter wouldn't have gotten any help or anything. And I can, you can use that terminology in many, or that, that, that analogy and that true story in many different scenarios. But the flip side of that is if you share your information, either somebody's going to steal it from you or there's haters out there and they're going to send negative vibes your way, uh, all this type of stuff. And my thought process is, yeah, that's probably true. There's some truth to that. But if I focus on that and I worry about that, I'm never going to be able to move forward with my plans and goals and dreams. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, you're going to run into uh, haters no matter what. And, and I mean, you're right, going back to the iPad example, I'm not going to go out and tell everyone, here's my schematic that I've designed or whatever. But I do think it does make sense to put the word out and um, I was recent, recently reading a book by uh, uh, Donald Miller, and um, he made this statement. He said, you know, I'm finding that uh, I've been a little bit too overprotective in how I've approached life, like uh, sort of, you know, people are out to get you. And he says, his statement was, I'm finding that there are a lot more lifeguards out there in the water than there are sharks. Mm -hmm. And so as you share what you're doing, you're going to find people who really want to help or would know somebody who might be able to help you. And uh, just as you gave the example of the mother-daughter, um, man, why not take advantage of that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and thanks for sharing that. I was just had that on my mind, and I thought of it when I was reading through your bio uh, with the goals and dreams and what you do in helping motivated people move forward. Um, it's, I just found it kind of relevant in that regard. So, you know... One of the other things that we like to talk about here on Men of Abundance, and it's not really a like, it's more of a necessity in that everybody has these kick in the gut moments. And what makes the difference between those weary achievers who move forward in life and those who don't is what they do with those kick in the gut moments. Do they learn from them? Do they look at it? Is this something that happened for me as opposed to me? 
That being said, I would like for you to share one of your kick in the gut moments with us and really make us feel that. Well, yeah, there there have been plenty, um, mm-hmm. but but I'd probably say uh, the one that has is marked me the most was uh, in essence a, a death of a dream. Um, I was working toward a particular uh, vision for where uh, I was going and uh, starting this brand new uh, venture enterprise and. The long and short of it is, despite all the hard work and and you know doing what it took and all that kind of stuff, I I, I saw this thing come to life only to to die within a couple of years, and it didn't matter what I did, it just it just was it was like dying and and it was very very frustrating and I got real disillusioned about you know the whole idea of dreams and why even try because it's so painful when they fail and and, and honestly I just got. In, in my case, I got mad as hell at God because I felt like he had sent me to go do this and then he didn't show up. And so for me, it was just a very, it was a shot to the solar plexus where, you know, it was tough. But I learned some really important things from it uh, that ultimately are good things. Uh, one of them was the fact that failure is just part of success. I mean, it's, it is a part of it. You have to for me, I had to become, I have to now become the person that I wasn't before so that I could be all that I needed to be to be successful in that particular situation. And so, you know, to me, it's like going through chemotherapy where some things just got to got to die in you before you can move forward. Or maybe to mix my metaphors, the physical therapist and, you know, you're you're insisting that my I, I limp with the walk and I'm, I'm fine. And he's like, don't you want to run? Of course I want to run. I just don't want to go to physical therapy to do it. And, and you know, in reality, you gotta you gotta go through the tough stuff to get to the good stuff. Um, <clears throat> and the second thing I learned was was a, like you sort of alluded to it earlier, Wally, and that is I didn't know what I didn't know. You know, when you're younger, and I, I love on your bio you talk about the fact that when you're young, you just like you knew everything and you had it all figured out. So did I. And um, there were things that I just had no clue on and. I was very focused on certain skills and and doing things a certain way. But one of the things I was totally unaware of were what I call the deeper skill sets of success. Um, Certain traits that successful people have and they share. And it's like, oh, okay, well, I I wished I had known that, you know. Or or there's certain hidden currents out there that are pushing you around and causing you to move in directions that you don't even see. And... Yeah, I wished I had known that, or I would have made better decisions in, in certain contexts. So, you know, all of that comes down to saying I needed to go through that so that I could become more of the person, in my opinion, you know, that God can use to accomplish great things. Right, absolutely. Uh, and thanks for sharing that. That is absolutely correct. I love the analogy that you used in that, you know, and what you stated is that something, some things in you must die in order for you to move forward. And what we're trying to do here, guys, is enhance your mindset. You know, you can, you're still going to be you, you're still going to be who you are, but your mindset ag- absolutely has to grow. And it's not going to do that unless you put yourself out there in those times of adversity, in those difficult and challenging moments. You just it's it's a requirement it just has to in order for you to grow so yeah great uh great kick in the gut moment and great learning points absolutely love it so based on what you're doing and i know that you know you've got your book out there as well the research back five step process to making better decisions and we definitely can all uh find ways to make better or need better ways to make better decisions anyhow with the folks that you're working with and the book that you have and your website, I know you've got a couple good news stories that you'd be able to share with us to kind of bring home what it is you're doing and why it's so important. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of encouragement. Uh, one is the fact that um, my audience has grown pretty pretty stoutly. Um, I've got like within a year, I've got about ten thousand uh, fans and followers. Which is really, really amazing to me. Um, part of what I think is working so well, and why people like, you know, what what I'm doing at Wise Insights, and also on my uh, Twitter feed, is that I do try to provide real, actionable insights, 
that are uh, interesting to read and and at the same time you know have a lot of good meat to them it's not just fluffy stuff um, but there's the other component which is just empathy you know I mean I get it uh, it's hard out there it's there's a lot of people who are really really discouraged or beaten up or whatever and and so I, I look at wanting to provide them oxygen so when I get feedback from these folks um, you know, saying, wow, this has really been helpful to me. It, it's really, really good. And right now I'm in the middle of uh, our, our, our uh, communities in the middle of a what we call the 30-day comfort zone challenge, uh, Operation Don't Settle. And the goal here is that every day you try to do something that will stretch yourself a little bit. You know, even if it's something like I always take this route to work, well, I'm going to take a different route. Uh, I'm just going to do stuff differently. I'm going to try things that I wasn't, I wasn't willing to try before. I was going to... You know, and there's a million ways to do it. In fact, there's a ton of good resources on the site of great ideas that you can do. But one of the uh, readers, uh, her name is Melissa, wrote me back uh, probably about a week ago, and she just said, "You know, I'm so glad that I'm doing this challenge. It's helping me move forward. It's, it's, it's. I'm seeing a real difference in my daily life." And she's just amazed as to, you know, how how life has gotten different because she's sort of stretching that muscle. So really really encouraging and uh, you know a lot of my resources have been really gotten good feedback people are like wow that's pretty eye-opening I had no idea it's like well that's the whole point you know let's let's get the map out there so people can can uh, navigate a little bit more effectively exactly yeah very very good point yeah I never knew that and that's something that's why you're here <laughs> that's right I love it I absolutely love it and I love those type of challenges like that as well um, I I once uh, heard a story about a guy who had uh, so many fears, and he would just go out and and do those things. Something like walking up to a you know when they order their burger at a restaurant and ask for the soda for free or something like that, knowing they're not going to get it, but just doing that just to kind of put themselves out there in an uncomfortable situation. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm I'm actually familiar with uh, the young man. Uh, he was an immigrant from China, and right. uh, I, wrote a, I wrote up a whole email about it. Uh, it's just, it, it's really great stuff. One of the things we noticed in the comfort zone challenge is there are things that you're afraid of, uh, you know, fear of failure, fear of what people think, things like that. So we we all kind of know those instinctively, but there's also I've noticed uh, a dimension of the comfort zone that's not fear based. It's just you know. I don't want to do it. Uh, I just, you know, and part of it's, uh, you know, s silly little things where you're just more comfortable doing this than doing that. It's not a fear thing. And and so it's all, to me, connected to the same muscle, which is to stretch yourself and try new things. Um, I mean, that's one of the traits of successful people is they're not afraid to try. They're not afraid to, to fail because um, they know that's the path to success. So, uh, we're all learning together uh, on the the comfort zone challenge, which is uh, uh, probably two thirds of the way done, and I'll I will definitely run it again because it's been really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely cool. I'm gonna look much closer into that myself. I actually contacted him. I can't remember his name uh, off the top of my head, but I did contact his folks. They replied back, and he was pretty busy at the time. But that I've got it on my calendar to contact him again. He, he'd be a great guy to talk to on the show or in person, just for personal reasons otherwise. A great story. Yeah, indeed. So we're at the point, Pat, where we're going to pay it forward to our abundant leaders. You ready to do that? Sure thing. Outstanding. So share with our men of abundance one to three actionable steps that they can take today. Well, I'm going to tag on to where we were going because it's it's just had that kind of impact I, in my life um, is you know operation don't settle stretching yourself comfort zone is a muscle one of the things we've discovered uh, just in general research is that the people who stretch uh, their zone the zone gets bigger and so the things uh, I don't know if you've ever done public speaking but when you first do public speaking it's terrifying um, but if you do it enough, or if you're doing presentations, or if you're doing, you know, a sales pitch or whatever, if you do it enough, you get comfortable with it, and now it's not a big deal. And uh, and so it's just a whole mindset of of always stretching yourself and saying, I'm not going to give in to the 
I don't know. I don't know. And so to the listeners, I would simply say, you know, every day look for one way to stretch yourself, one way to, you know, I'll give you an example from my life. Um, I, I'm one of these guys who I like to put my head down and make good progress on things. But on the converse side of that, the negative side of that is when I'm interrupted, I'm not very nice because it's, you know, everything's back to this thing over here. But you know what? I work from home. I've got a family. And so when your kids interrupt you, you don't want to, you know, beat them up about it. So what I've had to start doing, and I've been doing this for a while now, but I'm, I'm using this as an excuse for every day, is to look for opportunities to say yes when I normally would have said no. Not because I'm afraid of anything, but because I don't want, I want my priorities over here. So it has really opened up a whole new world for me where I'm more relaxed, I'm more willing to go with the flow, uh, and, and it's, it's been a good thing for my family and certainly been a good thing for me. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. What habits make up the biggest impact in your life? Well, you could say reading, um, but I think for me, uh, probably how I start my morning, and I know a lot of your readers have a certain ritual or routine that they use to kind of get geared up and focused and all of that. Um, so for me, I, I like to get up. Uh, I like to walk pretty much every day. Sorry, Wally, I don't kayak through, uh, across Pearl Harbor, but <laughs> maybe someday. Um, but I like to walk and pray. Uh, I like to read my Bible. I like to talk to God. I like to listen a lot more than I talk. Um, and I like to think. And I, you know, I do that all in like about 20 minutes. I got some hills near my house, and so I just walk those hills. I try to set my attitude. I try to set my priorities for the day. When As soon as I get back to my office of like, what's the, the three big rocks I'm going to work on today? I, I, those are the most important. And they make all the difference in the world because now I'm ready to go. And it's not like I'm on a treadmill from the get-go. I'm, I'm really focused. And I, I have my priorities straight. Yeah, I like this, that you said that you just like to think. Sometimes I just shut off even the podcast and the audio books. And I just, that's one of the things I do first thing in the morning. I just sit. I'll do my kind of meditate. I don't really call it meditation. I just kind of breathe and clear my head of everything. And then there's times throughout the day where I'll just sit and think. The stuff that I'm doing. I love that you do that. So you mentioned Perfect. reading. What are you reading or listening to now that you'd recommend to our abundant leaders and why? Well, <clears throat> um, if, if your uh, readers or listeners want to continue to grow, a book that was recommended to me, and I'm like, ah, it probably didn't apply to me, um, is a book uh, that Donald Miller wrote, kind of a s autobiographical story. Uh, it's called Scary Close. And it's just about how, uh, and I think men in particular are very, very susceptible to this, where um, the premise of the book is, is, my first thought was, oh, this is for these people who are 45 years old and never married, and they're afraid to make commitments and stuff. And it's like, you know, I've been married 27 years, that's not me. And um, But it's really a bigger book, and it really talks a lot about how we, we perform for people's um, uh, appreciation and people's uh, to like us and all that stuff and so we have a what we call the true self and the and the false self and the false self is you know I'm gonna be a certain way around folks because I know that works um, coping mechanisms whatever you want to call them and it's been a really interesting read he's very great read a great read and a good author uh, very easy to read is probably a great way to say it so if the readers want to step out of their comfort zone, they might want to check that book out um, because and I'm in a group of guys where we're going through it, and it's we're all we're all bringing a lot, uh, taking a lot away from that. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds very interesting. I'll definitely have that linked up in the show notes at menofabundance.com. So go check that out, guys, because I want to put it on my add it to my list of books to get to as well. So. Pat, what do you feel holds most people back from living a life of true abundance? Probably fear. Um, sometimes it's just the this, this sense that they, they can't believe that they could have more because they've they've tried and failed a few times, and they and you know to them it's just that's they're not destined to experience 
an abundant life like people talk about, but that's really not true. And, uh, you know, for me, it's just a matter of, of having the right mindset that says, you know, you, you can get so much further than you ever thought you could, but you got to have the right mindset. And I know you teach a lot about that, Wally, and trying to help your, your listeners understand how to get their, their head on straight so they can keep moving forward. So I, I think that's a huge issue. Yeah, I do too. <clears throat> I do too. And it's a tough one to overcome, especially for some people because the fear is just so, so deep uh, for so many reasons from personal experiences or experiences of their family members or whatnot. But it's definitely one to work on and overcome. So what does living a life of abundance mean to you? Well, to me, it's just, I call it the greater life. Uh, it's a life full of possibilities a life of you know with with a mission and having impact and making a difference and not dependent on favorable circumstances it's you know and again for me it's god directed god centered uh bigger than it's bigger than me um but it's it's just a, a life a life that realizes that there's a lot more out there that i can i can work toward than i ever thought i could and you just have to keep working at it yeah Absolutely. So, Pat, we're going to close this up, but before we do, what did we not talk about that you'd like to ensure our men of abundance get out of our conversation? Well, uh, you know, I, I alluded to the hidden hidden influences that are out there that we don't know about, and, uh, you know, I've got a ton of really good free resources on the website uh, that talk about some of these hidden influences. i got a really amazing, I, and I kid you not, I mean, I'm, I'm just so amazed by this infographic that talks about these you know the currents that are going on underneath your raft and you you're you're paddling as hard as you can in one direction but the currents are pulling you in another direction and if you only knew you could you could work with those currents to get you where you want to go so um that would be something i want your guys uh your your listeners to to understand and take advantage of these are things that i'm continuing to learn that are just making me go, gosh, I mean, we've all heard, for example, of cognitive bias. Um, you know, we see that in the political landscape, but there's a ton of other cognitive biases uh, that are not just confirmation bias is the, probably the main one people know. There's a ton of them out there, and I've got an infographic that shows 50 of them and what they mean and how they influence you, and they're just, you got to know about these things or you're not, you're going to really be a, a at a dis distinct disadvantage yeah absolutely definitely get the knowledge guys go there and check that out i'll have all of that linked up in the show notes as well so we've already shared your website and some other information to check out what you got going on is there any other way that uh, you'd like for our men of abundance to reach out to you you know the the two best ways uh one is the website wiseinsights.net um and then the second way if if you're on twitter wise insights uh, the number four and the letter U, so Wise Insights for You, um, where I have a lot of great quotes um, from people who've been successful, lessons that have been learned, um, and uh, just check that out. It's, it's something that's pretty encouraging and inspirational. There's a lot of good, good humor in there, too. Excellent. Absolutely excellent. I'll have all of that linked up over there as well. So, Pat, it's been a great conversation. I got a lot out of this. I'm sure the men of abundance did as well. Uh, and uh, have an amazing day, man. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Wally. Appreciate the time, and uh, great to spend it with you. Excellent. Aloha. Aloha. That's a wrap. Cool. Very so nice. Where can Good I job. Find that? Do you mind if I use that infographic and put it in the show notes? Oh, not at all. Uh, in fact, let me send you a couple of URLs where people can find stuff. Like I have a, a resource page that has all like the decision-making stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then the infographic, there's an article built around it that kind of explains it so that when you get the infographic, it makes a lot more sense. Right. Um, so I'll, I can send you some URLs um, that will help. Okay, cool. Absolutely wonderful. Pat, I appreciate it, man. And, um, you know, what feedback do you have for me? I always like to ask some of my guests that are in a space that I want to be in um, as far as coaching and, and working more with people. Uh, and, uh, you know, any, any feedback you have for me for the podcast or anything of that nature? I don't really. I mean, I, I think your, your concept is great. And uh, do you have uh, any strategies that you're working toward in terms of monetization? Or are, are you letting those kind of 
occur uh, happen uh, as you progress? Yeah, a little of both, but really I'm really focusing on, as soon as I, as I mentioned in September, I'm pretty busy, um, but starting in October, I'm going to really be hot and heavy on getting my uh, membership st- site up and running because I've had folks get a hold of me and ask me to coach them in living a life of abundance or work with them somehow. I've even had a one spouse, one wife called me, and or not called me, but sent me a message and said, hey, I'd like for you to work with my husband. I was like, well, it don't really work like that. You know, <laughs> he kind of needs to want to, you know, do that as well, and I appreciated it. But, yeah, so the membership side is one thing. I, I just figure instead of, you know, all my mentors and everybody I talk to say, look, do one, start with one-on-one and then, you know, build a membership site after that. But based on what I'm doing, it's more of an integration type of thing in that, um, you know, I don't know that I can build a program. There's no program one size fits all type of thing for this or most anything really. Uh, so I'm kind of going back and forth on the one-on-one thing or building a membership site, but I'm already in the process of putting a membership site together because either way it's going to go there. Well, that sounds like a great idea. I think at some point I'll have one in that direction, but it's probably a good you know, 18 months away. I, for me, I, I'm I'm trying to lay out kind of a, a real logical path where, uh, for example, the comfort zone challenge is trying to identify people who really want more, who have a little bit of hunger to make a difference and be different and grow. And, and then from there, I think I'll try to create maybe a, a, a reasonably inexpensive, you know, course that, uh, kind of fits along those lines to, to help people grow and stretch and stuff and and uh, you know maybe from there you know go to something like a membership site or something so who knows um, I'm still in the phase of growing the audience and just providing a lot of great value as you are I'm sure yeah um, I, I don't have a lot of time for coaching so you know for me it's it's like uh, that's, that's trade my time for my dollars, and I'm not. I don't, I'm not in that position. Yeah, I'm so. not. Yeah, I, I'm not super excited about that either, because I'm trying to live this, you know, aloha abundance life and maximize time with family and stuff like that. So, I think that's why I like the idea of the membership site because they can also help each other, as many masterminds do. Are you familiar with um, John Ramstead? No. Um, he's got a uh, a podcast called Eternal Leadership. Um, real smart guy. He's a former Navy pilot um, who uh, has a really amazing story. Um, but the reason I thought of him is what he's doing, and he's got a partner, but what he's doing is he's doing, he's doing training. He's essentially training coaches, sort of like John Maxwell did. He's training people to coach underneath him using certain methodologies and things he's learned. And, you know, he's he gets some residual, I guess, from that. But at the same time, they get clients and he's just, you know, I just think that might be a great way to go where you're not spending all your time, you know, doing, you know, you're, you're not fishing for people. You're teaching some people how to fish. Yeah. Yeah. I'll look into what he's doing. What's the name of the podcast again? Uh, Eternal Leadership. Eternal. Okay. He's a real nice guy. Super, super fella. And, uh. Um, but he told me some of the stuff he was telling me he was doing, you know, was some of us through like the, uh, the military, he was doing certain leadership training stuff. And I thought, wow, you know, that's pretty amazing. So, um, but you know, I, I will definitely connect you with others that I've gotten to know. And, uh, in fact, I got a little email that I put together with, with, you know, connecting different folks. So mm-hmm. I'll introduce you to some of these other folks, and then you'll probably get somebody reaching out to you saying, hey, we'd love to have you on our show, and that kind of thing. Perfect. Awesome. I appreciate that, Pat. That'd be great. No problem. Hey, uh, it's time to pay it forward to folks Indeed. like you, Wally, as you do to others. I appreciate that. I really do. That's what it's all about, man. Have a good day. Absolutely. All right. Take care, Wally. Take care. Bye-bye. Listen, guys, enhancing your mindset can be hard, but don't complicate things. It really is very simple. That doesn't mean to say it's easy. Simple does not equal easy. But just like anything else in life, when you have a coach, when you have somebody by your side, it does make it easier. The thing is, you already have what it takes. 
What a coach does is able to see what you're not able to see and pull that out of you, help you pull that out of you. You're going to do the work, but a great coach can help you pull out your true potential and make you realize that you have what it takes to do what it is that you want to do. So get a coach, do your research, do your due diligence, find a coach that you resonate with. If you resonate with Pat, hire Pat. If you resonate with me, let's have a conversation and see if you're fit for one of my one-on-one or one of my group programs. Or talk to any of the other coaches that I've already had conversations with or just do your research elsewhere. But get a coach. It's that important. Now, go out and live your life of abundance and make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.